Hello and welcome. It feels like it's an unavoidable truth that as laptops get older, the slower it becomes. Well, at least that's my impression with my Microsoft Surface Go. Despite its specs, which looks good on paper, the stupid laptop chugs to the point where I'm better off using literally anything other than it. So eventually I had enough and decided to go and search for a new laptop. But ever since Microsoft launched its latest operating system, Windows 11, I've been really hesitant with upgrading due to all the controversial and concerning news surrounding it. However, I was kind of desperate, so I was willing to give Windows 11 the benefit of the doubt. As a result, and after much searching, I got this laptop with all the specs I really could ask for in a computer. And it should have been great. But when I tried to set it up for the first time, Windows refused to let me without access to the internet or a Microsoft account. For me, that was my last draw with Windows. And for the first time in, I think, a decade, I installed Linux as my primary operating system on my laptop. Now, all this happened last year year and I been daily driving Linux ever since and wanted to share with you my experience with it both the good and the broken today's video is sponsored by us at 16-bit virtual studios and our controllers pools I'm always looking for ways to make organizing my game consoles and their accessories easier. And due to the wires, classic controllers were always the hardest, but not anymore. With our controller spools, you'll have a way to contain the wire mess and a way to show off your controllers. Currently, we have spools available for the NES, Super Nintendo, and DualShock controllers with plans to make more in the future. You can get your controller spools today from us at 16bitstore.com. And if you use our offer code 16bitreview, you can get 15% off your next multi-item order. Now before I go into this laptop and Linux, I do want to explain my rationale for why I refuse to set up the pre-installed Windows 11 on this machine. It's not like I don't have the internet to sign into a Microsoft account that I may or may not have, nor do I have an older copy of Windows 10 that is just laying around that I can use instead. Yes, I have a good internet connection. I wouldn't be able to do my business if I didn't. But I still know quite a lot of people who don't and can't since they live in extremely remote communities. If they had purchased this laptop and didn't have the foresight to set it up as soon as they bought it, they would have made it their way home, tried to set it up when they got there, and realized that they would have bought a brick because it would have been completely unusable, which in my personal view is unacceptable. On top of forcing an internet connection, Microsoft also forces and requires an online Microsoft account in order to finish the setup with no local account alternatives like I had with Windows 10. And while I do understand Microsoft's decision, I don't agree with it. And I am personally against adding any of my online accounts to any of my pretty much local only personal accounts that doesn't need it, especially just to have the privilege to use a computer that I spent hundreds of dollars on. I get it for having it for a specific service or even an app store, but I don't need it to set up the local account. And while I could easily go back to Windows 10, Microsoft is set 
to discontinue it by 2025. So if I installed Windows 10 on this computer, I am just delaying the inevitable. However, moving to Linux would not have been my first choice if it was just a few short years ago. And what convinced me that Linux was ready for my laptop was Valve pushing Linux as the platform for gaming with the Steam Deck. Proudly showing off its Proton compatibility layer being ready for prime time. And so, I installed Linux on my laptop, specifically Manjaro. And man, Linux certainly has changed since I last used it in university. From what I remember about Linux and why I moved away from it before was that nothing that I wanted to do on a computer worked with Linux. Outside of software development, light office tasks, and from my experience, a very unstable browser. But using Linux for over the last year, it sure feels like a normal desktop or laptop. And I feel that's due to a lot of work refining the user experience in various applications for Linux, with only marginal differences between Windows and the Linux native ports, if there were any. But the biggest change that I've seen is the operating system experience becoming more and more robust, to the point where I'd say that with the right distro and desktop environment, Linux can be about as user-friendly as Windows, though still not good enough for your grandma. Many workstation distros from Debian-based Ubuntu to Rail-based Fedora and Arch-based Manjaro all have GUI setting managers for most, if not all, of the configurations that you need to tinker with. App stores for package managers to get new software that you actually want, all without needing to use the terminal. Almost. My day-to-day -day usage with my installation of Manjaro has been good enough. Most problems that I've seen has been resolvable within the GUIs or a quick logout or even a restart. There are a few quirks which I don't know if I should blame the operating system, Manjaro's tested packages, or even the desktop environment. Like when my HDMI audio doesn't always switch over when it's connected or breaking if the machine goes to sleep. And needing to update my grub to disable Intel's IBT feature just to get virtual machines working. However, the progress is looking good and keeps incrementally getting better with each software update. But everything I've explained up to this point is merely just configuring the computer to work and creature comforts. Congratulations, my computer is now set up with all the settings tinkered to my exact taste, to the lack of which that not even Windows 10 could do. Doesn't mean anything when most of the software that I actually need to run is designed for Windows. Games were a particularly hard sticking point but I was blown away with just how much of my Steam library either was natively compatible with Linux or just worked with the software compatibility layers. And it's not perfect. Getting to grips with the software managers like Lutris and Enable Steam Play did require some Googling. However, getting a game to work on Linux is no more complicated than trying to get an older Bethesda title to play nicely or not to crash and even a new install of Windows. And when a game can be installed and plays, it's usually the limitation of my hardware, not the software, which is holding back my enjoyment of the game or even making the game playable. But I am pleased that even this laptop can run the Spiral Reignited Trilogy much better than it does on Switch. With that said, Proton and by extension Wine isn't good enough yet for every legacy title or new game on the bleeding edge. 
While the compatibility does have its strengths and some Windows games that refuse to work in 10 does work here, the legacy compatibility tools for 98 or XP games is sadly lacking. Sometimes older games just won't run at all and trying to install multi-disc games can be excruciatingly difficult. Meanwhile, newer games uh, they will either not run at all due to DRM restrictions, the game engine might refuse to start the game, or just outright crash. Or, well, if you can get it to run, will only work in a very, very buggy state. And since I am technically running the software in an unintended way, it also means that troubleshooting is either difficult for experienced users or next to impossible for everyone else. The saying goes with my professional software too. While it does work, my mission critical software refuses to even install on this computer. And if by some miracle I was able to install and run the software, it's either unstable or refuses to work the way I needed to since driver support or other dependencies just don't exist in Linux. If this was my main desktop, it truly would have been an ugly sticking point for me since I rather do like my video editing software Vegas and my CAD software Fusion 360. And yet, in spite of these various issues from moving over to Linux on my laptop, these issues are surprisingly rare and for the majority of my time using Linux, I didn't even notice which operating system I was using. When issues do crop up, it's beyond frustrating. However, since most of my computer usage is in a web browser nowadays anyways, the transition isn't as painful as I once remember it being. In truth, due to how much just works with this laptop, I'm actually planning on moving my main PC over to Linux once I'm either ready to upgrade the hardware on it again or when Windows finally discontinues uh, 10. Sure, there are mission critical software like Fusion and Vegas that just don't work and probably will never officially be supported on anything other than Windows. However, I actually have professional issues with both Vegas and Fusion. And after debating it for a while, I've decided as a business to look for cross-platform alternatives to both Fusion and Vegas. And it took a while, but I already found replacements for both software, and I am thankful that I did. So thank you FreeCAD for being an absolutely amazing alternative for Fusion 360 and for not locking old features behind paywalls or online accounts. And thank you DaVinci Resolve for actually having a perpetual license so that I can continue using the software for as infrequently as I do use it. So while I'm happy with my Linux install and don't want to go back to Windows, I sadly can't recommend Linux for non-technical users, at least just yet. Linux is to the point now where more advanced users who are familiar with how computers work can move over and have a good time with Linux. But I feel that a lot more work needs to be done uh, before I can recommend this to my grandma or my own mother as I feel if I give it to them now, they're just going to be confused why some random application or iTunes doesn't work just because it's just not compatible yet or you need to go into the terminal to fix these random uh, bugs or problems. As are my recommendations, if you do want to do this yourself, try Linux in a safe environment like a virtual machine just to see which ones you feel are right for you. While I do personally like uh, Manjaro, Fedora, Ubuntu, other than the packages, I found them to be very identical 
and I found that um, the desktop environment that's pre-installed to be a lot more impactful. Manjaro, Fedora, and Ubuntu are some of the more popular distros, which has a lot of variants uh, available for it with uh, desktop environments that may suit your taste a little better. I find they're the most flexible when it comes to supported and maintained operating systems. So uh, if, if you want my recommendations, go with one that has KDE Plasma installed as default if you are familiar with uh, Windows since it is the operating system that is the closest to uh, what um, I expect when I'm using a computer. But anyways, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you have yourself a good day. And as always, take care.